Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Believer's Church, home of authentic Christianity expressed in love, acceptance, and forgiveness. Come on, let's give glory to our God. We sing it out. Come on. Yeah. My heart's on fire. My heart's on fire. My heart's on fire for you. Yeah. My heart's on fire. My heart's on fire. My heart's on fire for you. Yeah, sing it out. My heart's on fire. My heart's on fire. My heart's on fire for you. My heart's on fire. My heart's on fire. My heart's on fire for you. praise we thank you for your love thank you for your presence in this place and we just give you thanks for today god lord we thank you that you turn graves into gardens we thank you that you turn turn bones into armies you make new life out of us your mercies are new every morning and we just thank you for that god there's nothing that you can't do lord and there's nothing that's better than you king jesus so we celebrate you we're thankful we bless your holy name thank you lord
Father God, in Jesus' name, we thank you, Lord God. I know there are a lot of people here that are going through a lot of things, Jesus. And Lord, they're looking for that change, that transformation. They're saying, Lord, help me, Jesus. Transform me, change me. Get me out of this situation, Lord God. We're looking to you as our answer. So, Lord God, I just pray for our church right now. I pray for each and every individual here, those that are watching online. Lord, if your marriage, Lord, if their marriage is in shambles, Jesus, we're looking to you to turn it around. Lord God, if it's health in their body, they're looking for a healing. They need divine healing. The doctors have done all they can do now. They need you to step in and heal their body. Be the ultimate healer right now in Jesus' name. Or there are those that are looking at their financial situations. That I don't even know how. They're saying, I don't even know how I'm going to get a, another meal on the table. I don't know how we're going to pay our rent. I don't know how we're going to meet all these bills. But Jesus, I thank you that you are the great Jehovah Jireh. You are their provider. You'll provide every need according to your riches and glory. I thank you, Lord Jesus, for broken families, Lord God, that you can bring healing and mending. Lord God, I just thank you for those that are bound up in addictions. Lord God, that you are the only one, the only one that can set them free, set them free today in Jesus' name. Lord God, for those that are, are worried about their businesses, Lord, I thank you that you're going to pour out your blessings upon their business as they honor you in their business, Jesus. You're going to honor them as well. And we just continue to acknowledge, Jesus, that you're the only way. You're the only one. There's nothing better than you. There's no government has the answer. Money doesn't have the answer. Relationships don't have the answer. You are the only one. You're the only one that has the answer. Jesus, there is absolutely nothing. Nothing better than you. So you, you are the one, Jesus. You're the one we look to today. In Jesus' name, Lord, we thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Be seated today, if you will. those baptisms for a minute. That is such an awesome thing to watch and get to rewatch. Well, my name is Allie Teal, and it is so good to see you this morning. It's good to be in God's house with you. And I want to tell you about baptisms coming up on January 24th. That was our baptism review video, and that is just a taste of what baptisms are like here at Believer's Church. It is such a time of celebration and excitement, getting to watch people declare their faith and just be excited in the Lord. And it makes all of us really excited. It's contagious. It's great. So that is happening next Sunday, January 24th, during both services. And if you would like to be baptized or just want to ask us some questions about baptism, you can check the I would like to sign up for baptism spot on your communication card. So go ahead and pull out these communication cards this morning. They're the big white cards that was in your welcome handout. And if you'll look on the back, there's a spot to sign up for baptism. And there's some other stuff happening on the back, and I'll talk about that in just a minute. But what these are, let me see. 
There we go. These are your communication cards, and they do exactly what they're called. They help us communicate with you, not just on Sundays, but throughout the week. And we want to have a relationship with you, not just on Sundays, but we want to actually do life with you. So be sure to fill these out with as much information as you are comfortable with. And what you're going to do, if it is your first or second time here with us this morning, we want you to take your card to the Welcome Center that is out in the lobby. It's the black counter. And Miss Amy and Pastor Scott, they're going to have some gifts for you just for turning in your communication card because we're excited you're here and because we appreciate you taking the time to fill this out. So that's if you're a first or second time guest here. And if it is not your first or second time, then what you'll do is you'll turn in your communication card when the offering is taken up today um, towards the end of service. So that's your communication card. And if you look at it, there's some next steps that you'll use during the service. Like I said, there's some signups on the back. There's a little celebrate with me section. So be sure to check all of those out. And speaking of celebration, there's another reason to celebrate. It's a great time here, believers, let me tell you. There's another reason to celebrate coming up on Sunday, January 31st. That is the date that we are going to uh, dedicate our student building back to the Lord. We have a student building out um, that way. Um, and it's where our believing kids do church. And if you've never been to our student building, let us know. We can take you through. But on this Sunday at 1030, we're going to dedicate it back to the Lord and really thank God for it because it has been such a blessing to us. And we're excited to see all God is going to do. So that is Sunday, January 31st. And we can't wait to see you at that student building dedication. And now it's time for some service. So thank you guys for listening to these announcements. Be sure to fill in your communication card and enjoy the service. All right, well, you've heard the age-old question. You've heard this question, and you probably know the answer, but how do you eat an elephant? What's the answer? One bite at a time. Absolutely. Well, let me ask you this. How do you fulfill God's purpose and plan for your life? One step at a time. One step in front of the other. The next step in front of that one. One step at a time. You can determine God's purpose and plan, fulfill what God has for you. Our steps are vitally important. It will determine the direction that we take. So think about that. You can have a big dream. You can have a big vision. God can show you what He wants to do in your life. This is where God has taken me in my life. You can even write a mission statement. You can make yourself some goals to get there. You can even have something that a lot of people don't have that you can have financial support. You can have people lined up to help you. People say, I want to help you fulfill God's plan for your life. You can have the direction of the Holy Spirit, know exactly where you need to go. But you'll never get there until you take your what? Your first step. And after that, your what? Your next step. And after that, your what? Your next step, one step, one bold step after another. So your steps are vitally important. It determines ultimately the direction that you're going to go and where you will wind up. So if I say, I'm going to walk to the back of the sanctuary, I'm going to take a step. Let me just back up. I'm going to take a step forward and walk there. I'm going in this direction. And if all of a sudden I turn to the right, where am I going? Okay. All right. Good deal. Maybe you're confused because I'm facing you. But I, so, so do I, and if I'm walking forward and I turn to the left, I'm going where? To the left. And if I turn around, I'm going backwards. Where am I going? Anybody want to go backwards today? Not me. I don't, I don't want to go backwards. So your steps are going to determine where you're going. They're vitally, vitally important. Every single next step, you just, it's just no way around it. The direction you head in is the direction that you're going to go. Well, some of you say, well, Scott, that's pretty basic. Okay, I understand that. I've got that. But what bothers me in my life is when I see where God wants me to go, but I don't know how to get from point A to point B. So we're going to let this sheet of paper represent point A. So you are right here at point A. This is where you're at, and you're standing on this sheet of paper. But you've got to get all the way over here 
to point B, uh, to point Z. You're going to arrive where God wants you to be. So you're thinking, well, I understand. I hear that. So I'm not going to turn to the left. I'm not going to turn to the right. I'm not going to turn backwards. I'm going to face the direction God wants me to go. I'm going to set myself a straight line course, get all lined up here. But it's just too big of a gap. I mean, I see it, but I don't know how to get there. So how am I going to get from here to there? Well, I'm going to pray and seek God. Say, God, thank you for showing me where you want to take me in my life. But I need to know one thing right now. The thing I need to know right now is I need to know my next step. And then God is going to reveal to you your next step. And when he does, what do you do? You take it. And then maybe the next step, well, this one's kind of obvious. Yeah, that's kind of obvious. But wait a minute, there's still a gap. I don't know how to get from here to there. Well, God, can you show me? Can you help me? And the Lord's going to show you your next step. Your next step. Maybe this one was easy enough to figure out. Okay, that's pretty obvious, Lord. Now, Lord, my final little step before I get there is here, and then I'm going to arrive at where God wants me to be. You've all done this as a child, right? You pretended like the floor was water, and you put books on the ground. Your mama came in, got onto you, were walking on the books, but you put the books down, and you walked around, and you got from one step. So we get there one step at a time, and every step is vitally important. Yes, every step will make a difference. As a matter of fact, a good, wise choice will get you to where God wants you to be in a great way, a good way. As a matter of fact, even in your, think about it, even in your spiritual life, one spirit-led step is going to take you in the direction where God wants you to go. In your business, one wise business decision will take you to where your business needs to go, right? And in your career, you know, a, a wise decision in your career can set a course for your professional life. And even in our relationships, a wise decision, a wise relationship choice could help you build a friendship forever, an eternal friendship with somebody. So don't take these steps lightly. These steps are very, very important. It's very, each and every step is very important that we think about it and we consider it. And don't get overwhelmed don't get paralyzed in fear like you're sitting here saying, well, I don't know how to get from here to there, so I'm just locked up. I find a lot of people just sort of locked up. I don't know where to go, but I just need to make a wise decision. So maybe in my, in, for instance, in my relationships, maybe my next step, well, maybe my next step is just to introduce myself to somebody. You know, the Bible says those that have friends show themselves friendly. Pretty simple concept, right? Maybe that's my next step. Maybe my next step is to uh, spend some time with some people. Maybe my next step is to call one of my family members I hadn't talked to in a long time relationally. Maybe my next step relationally is to ask somebody to forgive me for something I did to offend them. What is your next step in your relationships? Well, what is your next step also in your, in your career path? Maybe your next step is that you say, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go back to school. I'm going to learn something I've never learned before. Or I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to make, uh, begin to get a new skill. Maybe it's I'm going to ask my boss for a promotion. I'm going to better myself in my, in my performance, in my, my career. Just one step. What, what is different for everybody? What, what will yours be? Maybe in your business world. Maybe you're, first, you're thinking about launching a business. So the first thing you need to do is to write out a business plan. Get it down on paper. Maybe you need to do some investigation, find out is this a wise business choice or not. Maybe you need to launch your business, or maybe you already have a business and you're thinking now it's time to expand my business, or maybe even bring in a business partner. Spiritually, what is going to be your next step? Because maybe it's this year, it's just I need to read the Bible. First of the year, a lot of you started your read the Bible through plans. I encourage you to go on you version, get something like the one-year Bible, begin to read the Scripture every single day. Maybe for you it's, I need to start a prayer journal. I need to not just pray, but I need to see and encourage myself and how God is really hearing my prayers and answering my prayers. And maybe I need to do what Jesus has already asked me to do that I've not responded to it. Maybe I need to serve. Maybe I need to join a life group. Maybe that's what I need to, to build myself up in the Lord spiritually. And, and oh, by the way, when you join a life group this week and you come to a life group, you're going to get a what? 
Free T-shirt, free T-shirt, going once, going twice. You get them, you get them at your life group when you join a life group. So yeah, you'll get a free T-shirt, but you're also going to build relationships. Is what life groups are all about. We talked about that last Sunday. If you want to go back and talk in our sermon, bold community. But understand this: your next step, it may be, probably is going to be different than my next step, and our next steps will probably be different than everyone else's next steps. And some of like some of your next steps are really easy, but you got to take them. Some of them are really hard, and you got to take those too. Some are really simple, just a very simple next step, but some of them are bold, bold next steps. And as we're walking this year and enabled boldness, I'm, I'm boldness, I'm believing that you're going to take some bold next steps. But you take a bold next step courageously. How? One step at a time. One bold next step, another bold next step, another bold next step to get where God wants you to go. So I want you to get out your notes today. And I'm going to encourage you that are watching online, we welcome you today as well that you will go to YouVersion, go to events in your little Bible app, YouVersion, click on, type in Believer's Church, and your notes will pop up there. The rest of you, your notes are in your handout. You can get them out today, and we're going to begin to fill in some of these blanks today. But our very first fill in the blanks is called Personal Next Steps. You need to take some personal next steps. Now, I want to tell you something. You may not agree with this, but I want to tell you running a marathon is really simple. Now, I didn't say it was easy. I said it was simple. It's simple because all you have to do to run a marathon is to put one foot in front of the other one step at a time. As a matter of fact, if you'll do that 55,334 times, you'll complete a marathon. So it's pretty simple, right? Maybe not easy, but simple. Frank Shorter, one of our, the great runners of our times, he said this. He said, the 26.2-mile distance is about 1,660,032 inches. With each stride I move, he said, about 30 inches. So it would take me 55,334.4, to be exact, steps to go the distance. So how do you run a marathon? One step at a time, one step after the other. Your life is going to have to be determined by your next step. So you, I can't do it for you. You're going to have to get with God. You're going to say, Lord, what are my personal next steps? Where do you want me to go? How do you want me to get there? And what is my very next step? But I want to encourage you, don't take it lightly because your next steps will ultimately determine your destiny. They're going to ultimately determine your destiny. They're going to take you to where you're going to go. And it's going to be because not something you're going to do tomorrow or the next day, but something that you do today, your very, very next steps. I hear people say all the time, well, I, I don't even know how I got here. How did I get to this point in my life? Or they say, you know, how in the world did our relationship get to this? How did we end up here in our relationship? Or how did I get myself? I never intended to be in this much financial trouble, financial bondage. How did I get here? Well, the answer is very simple. You know how you got there, right? You got there one step at a time. You made some bad decisions. You made some bad decisions. You went in a direction that you shouldn't have been going. You should have been going this way, and you went that way. That's how you wound up here. In your relationships, you said some things that you shouldn't have said. You did some things you shouldn't have done in that relationship. That's how your relationship wound up, wound up where it was, where it is now. So even in your financial world, you spent when you should have been doing what? It's hard to say, right? Saving. You should have been saving. And that's how you wound up where you are financially. You don't get there overnight. You know, I love the story. A, a pastor told me that uh, there was a knock on his door at 3 o'clock in the morning. And he opened his door and there was a young couple there. And they said, Pastor, you got to help us. He said, our marriage just fell apart tonight. He said, your marriage didn't fall apart tonight. Your marriage started falling apart about six months ago. Go home, get some sleep, call me in the morning, we'll talk about it. So uh, it, it didn't just happen, it happens many times over one step after another step after another step 
after another step, one step at a time. And I don't know about you, but I really, I really want my life to move in the right direction, don't you? I want every step to be in the right direction. Listen, I, I, listen, I know what it's like to take wrong steps. I've had a, you know, a, a torturous path sometimes, if you will. But I really want my steps to be right. I want my steps to be in the right direction. And ultimately, I really want my steps to bring Jesus glory and to bring delight and pleasure to God. I would love for my life, and I, I'm sure you would agree with me, you want your life to bring pleasure to God. So this is what we're going to consider today. Put this in your notes. Let's write in ordered next steps. Here's the good news for you and I today. The steps of good men and women, people who are trying to do good, have that same desire we had to do good, can be ordered by the Lord. The Bible says in Psalms 37, 23, the steps of a good man, good men and women, are ordered by the Lord. Our next steps can be ordered by the Lord if we allow the Lord to, uh, to order them. We can say, where, Lord? What's my orders? What do you want me to do next? Lord, show me, order me, show me where you want me to go. And some of you will say, well, you know, I don't really like, I don't know, I don't like to be ordered around. I don't like anybody to tell me what to do. I don't want anyone else controlling my life. Well, to that, I've got one simple question for you, and that's, how's that working for you? How's that working out? Because, see, I've been there before where I'm going to order my own steps. And every time I'm ordered my own steps, made my own decisions, decided the direction that I felt like my life should go, it didn't always work out that well. As a matter of fact, it was oftentimes disastrous. So I want the Lord to tell me where to go. I want Him to order my steps. I want to make sure that I'm walking according to His order and according to His plan. And here's why. Here's why, because look at what the rest of that verse says. It says, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delights in his ways. In other words, your steps, when they are ordered by the Lord, will actually bring joy to God. He's going to delight in his ways. Now, understand what this verse is saying, because uh, this is one of the reasons I'm using New King James today, because the NIV is a little bit confusing. It doesn't really bring across the true point of the passage here. The NIV says something along the lines that uh, the one who, it, it, the steps of good Lord, uh, excuse me, steps of good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delights in his way. It says the one who delights in him. Now, we are supposed to delight in Jesus, and I think that when we follow his steps, we are going to delight in him, but that's not what this scripture is saying. As a matter of fact, the King James brings out the capitals and the H's and says, He, being who? God delights in who? His way, us. So think about it. Let's put, it, let's put that uh, next step up there, Logan. He, the Lord, delights in His way. That's the man or woman who's trying to do good. So when your steps are ordered by the Lord, and you're following the orders of the Lord in your steps, it's actually going to bring delight to the Lord. Can't you, can you relate to that? Can you think about with your, your children? You know, the other day, um, Allison was at our house, and she wanted to learn to ride her bicycle about training wheels. So I took her out to a little grassy hillside and kind of got her a little momentum going, let her go, let her fall, let her go, let her fall. And shortly within, you know, the next 30 minutes, she was riding without training wheels. And she came in, and she was super excited, wanted to show her family what she had done. And, you know, she's beaming with joy, but guess who else was grinning from ear to ear? Old granddaddy, the teacher, you know, yeah, yep, I showed her how to do it. I taught her, yep, taught you guys how to ride too when you were little, you know. And, uh, you know, I'll teach the ones after that how to ride, you know. So I was delighting in the fact that I was able to instruct her and give her orders and show her how to do something. We all do the same thing whenever our children take steps. Whenever we tell them, this is how you do it, and they do it according to how we tell them, and they are successful in life, it brings us great joy and delight. Well, the Lord is delighted when we follow His steps, not our own steps, but His steps for our lives. The steps of the good men and women, they're ordered by the Lord, and He delights in our ways. What about directed steps? We talked about ordered steps, but 
put in your notes, direct the steps, because God doesn't just order you to do something and then leave you out there floundering to figure it out on your own, but he begins to direct your steps. Proverbs 20, 24 says a person's steps are directed by the Lord. Now, I like that. So he doesn't just throw us out there with no direction, no course adjustment, but he directs us. If, again, I got to throw another if in here, if we allow him to direct us. We can follow his orders. This is where you can get yourself in trouble. Well, God, I'm following your orders, but I'm not allowing you to direct me. I'm doing it on my own. And God's saying, yes, I appreciate the fact that you are moving forward in the direction I told you to go, but you've got to allow me to also direct your steps. We want to make sure that he's going to direct our steps as well. And here's the interesting thing. I, I find this kind of interesting. Look at what the rest of the verse says. It says, the steps of a person, a, a person's steps are directed by the Lord. How can, how then can anyone understand their own way? I find it interesting that whenever my steps are now being directed by the Lord, the way I used to do it doesn't even make sense to me. Have you ever asked yourself, can you believe that we used to do that? You ever said that? Can you believe that we used to do that and maybe got away with it? Or, you know, when we, when we were young, can you believe we used to do that? You know, he said, can you believe we used to ride in the back of a pickup truck with those seatbelts? You know, like, can, you, can you believe that we used to do this, that, or the other? We used to say this, act this way. Can you believe I used to have that attitude? Can you believe I used to treat people like that? Can you believe I used to be so greedy? Can you believe I used to be so, you know, so mean? Can you believe that I used to be that way? I don't even understand that. We're amazed by those ways of doing things now that I'm being ordered by the Lord, now that I'm allowing him to direct my next steps, my old way of doing things just doesn't even make sense to me. And when I try to do it, when I try to do it, it doesn't make any sense either, and I fail. I'm not, I'm not successful. And you ever ask yourself, why am I even doing this? Why, what is your problem? Why are you choosing to do this? This is not what the Lord wants for your life. What I'm doing right now doesn't make sense at all. I just need to stop what I'm doing. Every now and then I try to do it my own way. I try to direct my own steps and I, I get confused. And I believe you do too. I don't even understand what I'm doing. Jeremiah, he had a good take on this. And he said a prayer. The prayer is found in Jeremiah chapter 10. The prophet Jeremiah chapter 10 verses 22 and 24. We'll look at 23 first, or excuse me, 23 through 24. Uh, Lord, I know that people's lives are not their own. It's not for them to direct their steps. Now, I don't know if that's what the world believes. Does the world believe that I know that people's lives are not their own? Or what does our society teach us today? It's whose life? It's your life. Live it the way you want. Do what you want to do. Make yourself happy. This is my life, my choices, my decisions, and I can do whatever I want to do, and everyone applauds that. But see, Jeremiah is talking about the surrendered life that Christ Jesus calls all of us to live. I know that people's lives are not their own. If you have surrendered your life to Christ Jesus, your life is not your own. Your life belongs now to Christ Jesus. The Bible even uses the term slavery, that we are enslaved to righteousness. We're enslaved to Christ Jesus. We have submitted ourselves willfully to Him for Him to be our master, our leader, our Lord, our guide. My life is not my own. So it is not for them to direct their steps. Because I've surrendered my life to Jesus, it's not for me to make my decisions and direct my own steps. And I believe this is what gets a lot of believers in trouble. They come to the altar. They pray for salvation. They say, well, Jesus, I surrender my life to you. Then they get up from the altar. They brush their knees off, and they start directing their own steps and making their own choices and their own decisions. But Jeremiah said, oh, no, no, that's not going to work. I understand, Lord, that people's lives are not their own. It's not for them to make these decisions. When you surrender your life to the Lord, your steps are ordered by the Lord, 
and they are directed not by you, but by the Lord. I love what Jeremiah, he goes on to pray. He says, I've got to stay on track. So look what he says in verse 24. He says, discipline, discipline me. Lord, now don't not, do it in due measure, not in your anger, or you will reduce me to nothing. So basically what he's saying is, Lord, in order to keep me on step and keep me on the path, you've got to discipline me. Now, I know that none of you have probably ever prayed that. Anybody ever prayed, God, discipline me? Well, you need to. You need to. And now, but now quickly add what Jeremiah says. Now, not, not too much, Lord. Now, not, not in a harsh way. I'm not asking you, like, to throw down fire and just wipe me out here. But uh, what I'm saying, Lord, is I'm going to need some course of direction every now and then. Because, I, you know, I tend to drift. So I'm, I'm taking my steps, and I tend to drift a little bit to the left. You know, if you have to discipline me, you know, spank me, get me back over here. You know, if I'm going this way and all of a sudden you have to kind of bring correction into my life, do what you need to do, Lord, because it's vitally important that I move in the right direction. So discipline me, Lord God. But do it, you know, do it lightly. Do it lovingly. I just want to remind you, don't, don't waste me away here. So ordered steps, next steps, I mean directed steps. So the next thing is going to be this, supported steps. Put that in your notes. I'm not only allowing to God to order my steps, I'm not only submitting to his direction, but I'm allowing him to support me. And if I don't do his orders, if I don't do it according to his direction, I tend to stumble and fall. I tend to mess up and I tend to fail. I don't know about you, but if I'm not submitting it to the Lord, I always fall. But when I'm submitting myself to God's orders and God's directions, I may stumble and I may fall every now and then, but the Lord is always there to catch me. Let's go back to Psalms 37. Let's go back and look at that one again, and we're going to add verse 24 to it this time. Back to Psalms 37, 23, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and He, the Lord delights in our ways when we're following His steps. Look at verse 24. Though He fall, He, small e, that's us, though He fall, He shall not be utterly cast down. He shall not be utterly cast down. Why? Here's what I find very interesting, because the Lord, when you're being ordered and directed the Lord is upholding you with his hands. The Lord, the Lord upholds him with his hands. So I think about it this way. When I was thinking about this, maybe a good, I would bring someone up here to stand if we weren't in, living in the COVID world right now. But um, think about whenever you're walking with a child and the child holds their hands up like this and you reach down and you hold their hand. So picture a small child, hands up, and I'm holding their hand. And we're walking together. You know, the child's not going to stumble or fall because I'm upholding that child with my hands. I've got that child's hands in my hands, and I'm upholding that child with my hands. So as a child, you're walking around like this. Which on a side note, I got to thinking about it this morning. There's so many postures referred to in the Bible, which is this posture right here, hands up. There's I surrender to the Lord. There's I receive everything God has for me. And now here's another one. I'm going to hold on to your hands as you lead me. So people, don't be afraid to do this, okay? Don't, don't be so, you know, bound up and that somebody's going to see you. Don't be afraid to lift your hands and surrender. Don't be afraid to lift, lift your hands and worship. Don't be afraid to lift your hands to receive. And certainly don't be afraid to let God take you by the hands and lead you. But here's the whole concept. If you, the Lord is holding my hands like this, and then the Lord says, now I'm going to turn you to the right. I'm going to need to go to the right. But if he, the Lord says, I'm going to turn you to the right, and I choose to turn to the left, then I'm going to stumble and I'm going to fall. So I have to stay ordered and directed by the Lord as he holds me by his hands. If, if he's leading me in a direction, holding me, by his hands, I've got to go in his direction. You can't say, Lord, uphold me with your loving hands and then go do what you want to do. Or you're going to stumble and you're going to fall. 
You've got to make sure that you're allowing him to hold you by his hands. And though, though you fall down, everybody's fallen down, everybody's made mistakes, the Lord just picks you right back up, and you keep going together with the Lord. You can choose to break away from his hands and go in your own direction. So in your life, you've got to determine those personal next steps where God wants you to go. You've got to make sure that your steps are ordered by the Lord. God, where, what's my orders? Lord, where do you want me to go? And now, Lord, now give me my next step, my bold next step, and direct me. If I get off course, Lord, you've got permission to discipline me. You've got permission to correct me. I want you to keep me right in line. Keep me going in the direction that you want me to go. And I thank you, Lord God, that I can depend on you, that you're going to hold on to me. You're going to uphold me with your hands. And I'm not going to be utterly destroyed. I'm not going to be utterly cast down. I'm not going to be utterly defeated, and I won't utterly fail because you uphold me with your hands. Well, those are your steps in your life, your personal life, your business life, your career life, you know, your spiritual life, your relationship life. But I want to talk to you a little bit before we leave today about some next steps here at Believer's Church. You know, we're all about next steps. You'll see the next steps in your communication card, bold next steps we're talking about this year. But Bottom line is this. This is what we want you to do when you come to Believer's Church. We want you to attend our services on Sunday mornings, and uh, we want you to experience Jesus. You know, it's all about coming here today to experience Jesus. I, you know, I just got to tell you, you guys watching online, glad you're watching online today. But I don't know if uh, you could feel, hopefully you did in your living room, uh, the tangible presence of Jesus that was here when we were singing that second song today. Something about gardens and graves? Is that, yeah, is that the name of it? Something like that. But, uh, that, you know, the, the tangible presence of Jesus. You know, you, that you felt the presence of Jesus. And the Bible says where two or three gather together in my name, who's going to be there? Jesus is going to be there. So when we, you come to Believer's Church... We want you to meet us and like us. We want to experience each other's kindness and goodness, but we consider this a failure of a day if we don't come here and experience Jesus. So we want you to come, be it on a Sunday morning, a Wednesday night, your life group or whatever. We want you to experience Jesus. The second thing is we want you to place your faith in Jesus as your Savior. Listen, there's no other way to heaven. There's no other way to God there is no other way for salvation other than placing your faith in Christ Jesus, the blood that Jesus shed, his blood on a cross is the only way, the one and only way you get to heaven, the only way you find salvation. So we want you to place your faith in Jesus as your Savior. The next step, step we want you to do is publicly declare your salvation with water baptism. You saw the video reviews today of people being baptized we're going to be being baptized. We're going to be baptizing people next Sunday. So your, your salvation experience can be a very private thing. Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sins. You could even say it silently if you wanted to. You could say it in the whisper of your bedroom. You could say it in the front seat of your car. You could say it in your seat. But then there comes a time when you go public, when Jesus said that you need to confess me before men so that I'll confess you before my heavenly Father when you get to heaven. So you need to go public. You need to say, I am a new creation in Christ Jesus. All things are passed away and all things are new. So we want you to declare your salvation with water baptism. You can take that next step next Sunday. Then we want you to also, now that you're born again, we want you to go through the Firm Foundations course. And some of you may not be aware of this course. Maybe we don't talk about it enough, but it is, it is online at believerstatesforall.com. And it's going to help you. It's going to teach you about salvation. It's going to make sure you understand that. It's going to teach you about Bible study, prayer, uh, community, being filled with the Holy Spirit. It's going to take you through various other next steps to help you get to where you want you to go, where God wants you to go spiritually. But we also understand this. Just in a real practical sense, in a real practical world, people, you and I, we all need to know and be known. We all need to make sure that people know who we are, and we need to know other people, and we need to be needed. Why? So that we can experience a sense of belonging, not just be a believer, 
but to belong, to know and to be needed, know, to be known, and to be needed. So we've set up next steps that are going to occur on Wednesday nights to help you accomplish that bottom goal, to know, to be known, and to be needed. So what we have going on on Wednesday nights and uh, also on Sunday morning, there's four things we want you to go through, four next steps. The first thing is on Sunday mornings, as a, a tender Believer's Church, we have something called a Newcomer Social, where you can meet right over here. We normally do it right over here, where you can meet the pastors and the leaders. You can hear God's vision for Believer's Church. We try to end that service about 15 minutes early so that everyone else gets to go home 15 minutes early. The rest of you come over here and you hear what the vision of Believer's Church is. And you, we're going to try to do that every first Sunday of the month as, as, as much as humanly possible unless there's some kind of conflict. So if you haven't been to that, that's your first next step in being known and knowing and needed. That's your very first next step. That's your first step of belonging is to come to the Newcomer Social. I think our Newcomer Social we had, was that last week or two weeks ago? Two weeks ago. Two weeks ago, we had a Newcomer Social. I think we had 38 new people there, and uh, that included children. And uh, there, there was a potential of 45 being there, but some couldn't be there for various reasons. But see, that's their first step to knowing and being known. That's their very first step, that Newcomer Social. Then on Wednesday nights, everything else now shifts to Wednesday nights. On the second Wednesday night, our next step is going to be life groups. This is not life group orientation to learn to be a leader, but this is to come find out what life groups are about at Believer's Church. You're going to learn the whys and the hows of our small groups, which we call life groups here at Believer's, and that's going to meet in the pavilion every second Wednesday night, unless there's a conflict, between 6.30 and 7.30, one hour on that second Wednesday night. Learn what it means to be in a life group. Be encouraged to see why we make life groups so important here at Believer's Church, why they are so vitally important. And then on the third Wednesday, which happens to be this coming Wednesday, we're going to have Next Step Membership. This is everything you need to know about membership at Believer's Church, but we're afraid to ask. Well, now it's your time to find out. Coming to this class does not make you immediately a member. You're not going to be forced to be a member, but you're going to find out why we think membership is important. Because a lot of churches in this day and time in America have no membership at all. But we believe that membership is important. It's very important. We're going to tell you why it's important. That's going to occur on the third Wednesday night. As a matter of fact, that's going to happen on 1-2020. This coming Wednesday, 1-2020, the 20th uh, day of the month, first month of the 2020 year. We're going to be talking about membership. So you've got to sign up, actually, on your communication card for that. It's at the top. It says, Next Step Membership. I'm sure you can read this. That's why I'm pointing it out. So it says right there at the top that you can sign up to be there Wednesday night to learn what membership is all about. Now, on our fourth Wednesdays, where every fourth Wednesday, we're going to have Next Step in the Pavilion as well about ministry teams where you're going to discover the joy of serving on a ministry team. This is where you're going to learn what your spiritual gifts are. This is where you learn how you can serve outside of the house, how you can serve in the house as well. And you're going to find your fit. This is where you'll learn about the first serve system we do here at Believer's Church so that we can find the right fit for you so that you can live that blessed life where Jesus said whenever you do things like wash people's feet, when you serve other people, you will be blessed. So that's coming up. That is actually on the 27th day. That's the 27th of this month. We're going to do this on Wednesday night. Now, these will occur on a rotating basis every Wednesday night. So, when you bring your new friends to church, you can encourage them, hey, jump in and be a part of these next steps. You don't necessarily have to do them in order. In a perfect world, if we lived in a vacuum, in an order it would be great. But uh, you can get catch them when you can. And But I would encourage you to try to go through all four as soon as possible. As a matter of fact, to be a member of Believer's Church, you're going to need to go through all four. So go ahead and start doing them as well. So be a part of these things that occur on Wednesday night. There'll be some Wednesday nights where we won't be able to do one, such as Vacation Bible School or something of that lines, Family Vacation Bible School. But as much as possible, they're going to occur every single Wednesday night. So these are your next steps that I'm going to highly encourage you to take this year to make a difference in your life. Now back to your personal next steps. Look on your communication card. 
We're going to be turning in this communication card in just a minute. We're going to be taking up our tithes and offerings, and you can drop this card in the basket if you're a regular attender, member here at Believer's Church. But if you're a new guest, remember, take this card to the Welcome Center out in the foyer to get you a, a little gift and uh, to meet, meet Janet and I after this service. But this is very important. It says, this week I'm going to answer the following questions. And church, I'm going to tell you, this is, this is the next step that really will make a difference in your life. I know sometimes we have a tendency to say, I'm going to do that next step, and I forget to do it, or we just blow the next step off. But this is one vitally important next step. Relationally, what is my next step? You're going to look at your relationships. You're going to say, what is my next step? You're going to look at maybe your lack of relationships and say, what is my next step? But you're going to do what God tells you to do. The next one is your career, career-wise. What, what is your next step? I mean, do you need to go back to school? Do you need to go get a syllabus? They still have syllabus? I guess they're on a, or a uh, you know, to find out what's offered at this particular school, what kind of degrees are offered. Do you need to do some investigation you need to find out the cost you need to apply for financial aid you see there's multiple next steps whenever we we started at believers church back in 2001 i can show you my office i said i have a white legal pad and now that we knew that god wanted us to start a church in statesboro i said well this is the next steps we have to do and i sat there and i wrote down 27 things and every time we got one of those 27 things done scratched it checked it put a check mark did the next one so there are a lot of things you have to do sometimes to to change your career path but you need to start with your next step what about your business wise god do you, is there a business you wanted me to start you know you sit there and you watch shark tank you think that should be me well it should be you if you got that kind of idea in your heart maybe i need to do this maybe i need to do that maybe i need to expand my business you know what is in my business life what is my next step Pray about it. Seek God. Let him show you. Spiritually, what is your next step? Spiritually, what is your next step? What do you want God to do in your life? And how is God going to get you there? What does God want to do in your life? And how will he get you there? At Believer's Church, what's your next step? Is it you need to start attending more? Is it do you need to join a life group and get a, did I mention, did I say anything about free t-shirt did I say anything about that your free t-shirt when you join your life group because you're going to get more than a t-shirt and you're going to build those relationships that bold community we talked about last week there's some people that have been a part of Believer's Church for umpteen years and have never been to a life group I heard a good report about a guy that showed up at a life group this week never been to one and what a blessing he was to that group and what a great testimony he brought when he showed up so maybe that's your next step today. Maybe your next step is to sign up for a, a ministry team. Maybe your next step is to come Wednesday night and find out what membership is about or to come on the fourth Wednesday to learn about ministry teams. But you let the Lord show you what your next step should be. Next week is very exciting because we are celebrating baptisms. People have said, I'm going to take the next step of baptism but they are taking the next step of baptism because they already took the first step of asking Jesus to be their Savior and Lord. And as far as your spiritual journey, that is the first next step to say, Lord, I want you to order my steps. I want you to direct my steps. I want you to be the leader of my life, the Lord of my life, the leader, the director, the master of my life. So I'm going to begin by surrendering my life to you today. You know, I believe what Pastor Scott said today. I believe that Jesus is the only way to salvation. Only by the shed blood of Jesus are people forgiven of their sins. The Bible says that all of us have sinned. All of us have fallen short of God's glory. And God made a way for us to receive forgiveness by not our own shedding of our blood or by our own goodness, but only by the shed blood of Christ Jesus. Well, Jesus did that for you almost 2,000 years ago, getting very close to that, that ultimate 2,000-year mark. It's already been done, but 
You have to appropriate it into your life. You have to believe and receive. You have to say, Jesus, I recognize that I'm over here walking my own way, walking my own steps, and it is disastrous. You know, sometimes I get it right and I feel pretty good, but next thing I know, I'm off course and it's just not working out. So, Jesus, I'm going to surrender to you because it's not my choice to lead my life, but for you to order my steps, direct my steps. And as I surrender to you, Jesus, please grab my upholded hands and sustain me with your hands today. So bow your head and close your eyes. There may be some of you here that just want to consider the condition of your soul. As a matter of fact, I want all of us just to take just a moment and say this prayer that we talked about the Lord does speak to us. So say, Lord God, speak to me today. Tell me what you want me to get out of this service. Lord, is there a next step that you want me to take or is my next step today? Absolutely, it's got to be salvation. And if, Lord, if I've received you as my Savior already, where do I go from here? Where do I go from here? What do I do next? Lord God, what do you want me to do when we get up and we leave this place today? What is going to be my very next step? Thank you, Jesus, for speaking to us. Lord God, for some of us, you just got to be loud. And Lord, you got to be consistent. Because we can be a bit of hard heads sometimes. Forgive us of that, Jesus. Father God, every time we've decided to go our own way and not your way, Lord, we confess that as sin right now. We thank you, Jesus, that you forgive us of all our sins. And you cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So cleanse us from these directional steps that we've taken that's not according to you. Lord God, many of us have caused some damage because of our wrong decisions, our wrong choices, our wrong steps. And we pray, Lord Jesus, that you come in and you, you fix that situation. You redeem us out of these situations. You show us the path out. As we confess our wrongness, show us the right way to go, Jesus. Show us the right way to go as well. Lord, in our relationships, Lord, do some healing there. Let there be some forgiveness that flows. As we take next steps to ask forgiveness or to extend forgiveness to other people. Lord, I thank you for our business leaders in the house that you're going to give them wise next steps for their businesses, that you're going to let them prosper and be successful so they can pour more into your kingdom. Lord God, for our careers, we want our careers to be fun and enjoyable where we're doing what we are destined to do. So lead us and guide us in those directions as well. And Lord, spiritually, Lord, that's the main thing. Spiritually, Lord Jesus, get us to where you want us to go this year. Let us take the, the wise next steps. Lord, it could be the Bible reading. It could be the prayer. It could be the serving. It could be the life grace. But, Lord, it could just be attending. It could be showing up. Lord God, I thank you, Jesus, that you're going to lead us and guide us. Now, ultimately, if you're here today and you don't know Jesus as your Savior, this is your opportunity to receive him. If you're watching online, this is your opportunity to receive Jesus as your Savior. So I would encourage you right now, if every head bowed and every eye closed, that you pray this prayer. We're going to pray it with you. We'll say it out loud. You can say it with us. And you receive Jesus as your Savior. You don't walk out of here today trying to do it on your own, but you walk out of here today living that saved and surrendered life. So with everyone else, head bowed, eyes closed, I'm going to open my eyes and look around. And if you're ready to say this prayer, would you just acknowledge that by just lifting your hand and saying, Pastor Scott, that's me. I want to receive Jesus as my Savior today. Maybe you're watching online. You can raise your hand. I can't see it, but the Lord sees it. You're making a physical acknowledgement that this is what you need. You need salvation. You need Jesus to save you. So we're all going to pray together. Let's all pray to say, Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sins cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Breathe your spirit 
and to me. Be my leader. Be my Lord. Order my steps. Direct my steps. And I thank you that from this day forward, you're going to uphold me with your hands. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Give the Lord a hand. God's a good God, saving God. I'm excited. This will make all the difference. Your steps are going to make all the difference in the world. We've got another next step we're going to do right now, and we're going to go ahead. We're going to bless the Lord of our tithes and offerings. You're excited about that, too? Yeah, we're going to, uh, as we sing here in a moment, the usher is going to come around, and they'll take up your communication card and your tithes and your offering. Now, again, if you're a first-time guest, save your card and take it to the uh, Welcome Center before you leave today. But as they do that, we're going to believe that God's going to meet all your financial needs according to His riches and glory. There's a first step in giving for the first time, a first step in typing for the first time. So take those bold next steps. And when you do, God is going to bless your life and He's going to turn your financial life around. Uh, he's always been faithful. I've never seen Him fail anyone in this area. You can put God to the test in this. So this is your next step to give heartily unto the Lord. So go ahead and stand to your feet. Father God, in Jesus' name, we bless these tithes and offerings that we're about to receive today. I thank you, Jesus, that we have more than enough because of your blessings. And whenever we give, even though if we don't feel like we have enough, as we give, Lord Jesus, you're going to bless us back. And I thank you, Lord God, that like King David said, I've never seen the righteous forsaken or his seed begging for bread. Lord God, we've never been forsaken. We're not begging for bread. You're meeting all of our needs according to your riches and glory. So we give today, Lord God, in obedience as another next step. Lord God, honor this next step today and receive this offering and these tithes for your kingdom and your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone that agrees says, Amen. Amen.
church, it's been a good day. This is my wife, Janet. I hope that you take this presence of the Lord that you feel right now and just take it back to your home. Let the Holy Spirit fill your home as well. Let it overflow out of you. Let your neighbor sense something weird just happened when you pull back in the neighborhood. What was that shift in the atmosphere? It was your car coming in to the neighborhood filled with the Holy Spirit, filled with people that are filled with the Holy Spirit of God. I want to encourage you on in this series to come on back next week. We're going to talk about some bold choices. And this is like one of my favorite things to talk about. This is one of my life things you might say because I believe that all of us are pretty much where we're at today as a result of choices that we've made. You may not like that statement. You might say, well, there was choices that other people did to me. Well, people do other things to you, but you choose on how to respond to what other people did. You respond to circumstances and situations that come your way. And sort of like our next steps, our choices are going to make a difference. What you choose to do today, you're going to be faced today with some decisions to make. It's going to happen every single day of your life. You're going to make little choices and big choices, but these choices are going to make a huge difference in the direction your life takes. So come back next week. Let's talk about some bold choices. Now, in your handout, also, you have an invite card, so you can continue to invite people. And I'm showing you that so you won't get it mixed up with this card. They look very similar, but this is your next. This is your card to sign up for a life group. So you got another chance this week to sign up for a life group. So you just check off which block you want to come to, and there's information about these online and on our webpage. You can research that, but turn this in at the uh, Welcome Center as well and join a life group this week. God's been doing some great things, some great things, our men, our ladies. Uh, so it's been a very exciting week, and I just don't want you to miss out. We've got another life group starting this afternoon for the first time here at the church at 4 o'clock, the family life group. So uh, Zuli and, uh, and Lance are going to be doing that one today. So God is doing some wonderful things in this group. I just don't want you to miss out. I mean, there's nothing in it for me. I don't get a bonus for how many people I recruit to come to life group or anything like that. I just know that it's going to change your life. And yeah, I guess there is something in it for, it, for me because it's going to make my job a whole lot easier whenever you get in a life group and you begin to grow and mature in Christ Jesus. So, Janet and I want to bless you today as we are leaving. So, And then after the blessing, the ushers will kind of begin at the back and dismiss you a row at a time and help with that social distancing thing. So if you're new, come see Janet and I at the Welcome Center. We're going to give you a gift. Amy's got a gift to give you as well when you turn in your communication card. So Father God, in Jesus' name, I thank you, Lord God, that right now we're going to begin this process of taking steps. And Lord God, it's going to be a testimony even as we walk to our cars that our steps will determine our direction and which car we show up at. But, Lord, so it is in life, Lord Jesus. Our next steps determine our ultimate destiny where you want to take us. So I thank you, Lord God, that we are submitted to you. I thank you that you're going to order our steps. Jesus, I thank you that you're going to direct our steps. And I thank you, Jesus, that you will always continue to uphold us with both of your hands. In Jesus' name, we pray and bless. And everyone that agrees, just give me a big hearty. Amen. Amen.